Welcome to the Generation Cedar Podcast. I'm Kelly Crawford, wife and homeschooling mom to 11. You have come to the right place if you crave to live and parent with purpose and need encouragement and inspiration to do your most important job, raising kids for the kingdom. Join me here every other Monday for your short, powerful shot in the arm. Let's dive into today's episode. In today's episode, I am talking to you parents out there who are considering homeschooling for so many good reasons. Um, Things are just getting crazy out there. And if you're a Christian, especially, oh, so many reasons to homeschool, so many reasons to pull your kids out of the government classroom. But if you're considering homeschooling, and it, even if you're already homeschooling, there are going to be some nuggets uh, in today's episode that are going to be really encouraging. So stick around. But I want to talk to you if you are considering homeschooling and it scares you to death, I want you to take a deep breath. You're not alone. Every parent who thinks about heading down the journey of, of homeschooling has fears. I had fears. Everybody has fears. I remember when I first decided, we we were talking about it, discussing it for a while, I couldn't believe that we were actually going to take this leap into the unknown. I read everything I could read, I listened, I worried, I second guessed, but now as a veteran homeschool mom of 23 years, let me start by putting your mind at ease and answering just some common questions, questions we all had, questions I'm sure you have. The first is always about socialization. This question needs to die, but unfortunately, I don't think it is anytime soon. Parents are so afraid that their kids won't be properly socialized. Your kids are not going to be weird if you decide to homeschool. Some people even think that it's a strange experiment socially to require kids to sit in a room in rows with only people their own age for eight hours a day because that's really not very lifelike. That's not really what real life is like. So that's, it's kind of an irony when I hear this question. The reality is that even if you homeschool, there are countless, and I mean countless opportunities for your kids to be around other people, to participate in sports, activities, events, maybe even more realistic settings, getting to interact with people of all ages and various walks of life. In my opinion, it's so much easier to give your kids a proper social life when they are not confined to, you know, being in a room, like I said, with people their own age. Our kids, personally, um, boy, there's a lot of socialization going on. We have to dial back our social life a little bit. So lay that fear aside. It, it's not, it's not real. The second question I get asked a lot is, I'm not qualified. How how am I qualified to teach? I don't have a teaching degree. Yes, you are. You are. Okay. Let's talk for a minute. You had a baby once upon a time. That baby learned more in five years than he will learn in a lifetime, including a complicated language, important forms of psychology, physics, so many other important things, all without a trained teacher or not even without even a formal curriculum. So do not underestimate your child's continuing ability to learn, explore, and master what he needs. Besides that, there's never been a better time to homeschool. The resources available to you are immeasurable. If you can simply provide resources and an environment conducive to exploration and questioning, and this is so easy to do, in the day we live in. You, my friend, are qualified to homeschool. And I want to flesh this out a little more because it's such a passion of mine. Like I said, when a baby comes into the world, he is given by his creator this amazing curiosity. He is given what he needs to learn the things that are important to him at the time they are important. He's curious about everything, even before he's able to express it. From the instant he's born, his brain has begun to process language and sights and sounds. He's heavily engaged in a living education, and he continues that through his toddler years, okay? 
everything is his teacher. You as his parent are his teacher. His experiences are his teachers. Everything he's exposed to, he's learning. Okay, then about the age of five, we, we tell parents, oh, now you need to go to send your child to school so he can learn. And what a confusing message, right? This child has already learned more in his five years than he will learn for the rest of his life. But we remove him from this living, breathing environment where he can touch and see and hear and taste everything at his own pace and his, in his interest. And then he's plopped down in a confining room with a bunch of other kids his age. He's definitely taught something. He's taught to be quiet when he has questions. He's taught to stand in a straight line outside the bathroom because that's a very important life skill. He's taught to work faster or slower depending on what everyone else around him is doing. And the list goes on. All the while, he is being conditioned to think that his teacher is the only one in his life who has anything intelligent to impart. That school learning is the only kind of learning. And that that kind of learning starts at 8 a.m. and it's over at 3 p.m. But education has taken on a different meaning. So we confuse schooling with education. Worse yet, as he gets older, it becomes fashionable to dislike school, which he equates with learning, right? Not all kids adopt this loathing of learning, but it is typical. And even worse, these older children being forced to conform to the average curriculum, work at an average pace, and study the average subjects are robbed of the ability to indulge their natural gifts, their natural talents and bents. Many would-be brilliant entrepreneurs are labeled and injured in this traditional classroom setting. Some kids do thrive in a classroom setting. I'm not saying they don't, but so many children have lost tremendous potential in their own areas of expertise because they were forced into a mold they didn't fit. And while there are some very basic concepts that everyone should learn, those concepts are not learned the same way or at the same timing by everyone. Reading, math, and communication. In my opinion, that's the, those are the three, the three R's, the bedrock of a good education. Those things will either be a delight to the student or a misery, depending upon that child and how those subjects are presented to him. So our job as parents to inspire our children to love to learn, that's the pivotal point of all his learning experiences to follow. So how is a person educated? By following their God-given curiosity and love of discovering things. It's when that natural love is squelched that we lose the real potential for education. Does it take a certified teacher to teach? Absolutely not. It takes nothing more than the ability to lead a child to answers. Can I take my child to the library? Can we read together? Then I can teach and I can do it well. Can we discuss things? Can we have conversations? Can we find the answers to things, to questions that come up? Can we visit other people with expertise in different areas of subjects and, and get find answers from them? Can I ask someone who knows what I don't know? Can we take a trip? Can we go to a museum? Can we learn how to think about the experiences around us? Can we learn how to communicate well by communicating? And I would throw in copy work. That's our favorite form of English. Can we study God's word, which is the beginning of knowledge? So yes, to answer your question, you are more than qualified. The third question I often get is how much does it cost? You can actually homeschool for free or you can spend a ton of money and everything in between. Over the course of our last 23 years, we have spent very, very little simply because we didn't have to. There are free resources, the library, online curriculum, thrift stores, and educating a person doesn't have to be costly at all. But there are curriculum choices that are more expensive. If you'd rather not do the work of finding the cheaper resources, it's totally up to you and your personal preferences, but there is no end to the options and the choices for types of curriculum. Fourth question, what about state requirements? 
each state has different requirements and you can check your state's requirement at um, online if you just search for my state homeschooling requirement. Let me encourage you to relax about the prospect of homeschooling. There's so much more I could say about this, but I wanted to just briefly hit those pain points that I hear a lot. We have all been conditioned to think that a school setting is the only way for a child to be educated. And while I appreciate the efforts of so many wonderful teachers out there, it has been my experience that the classroom is really a less than ideal situation for children to learn. It's very stifling, especially to those kids who maybe are not academically bent. There are so many ways to be educated. And also there are so many forms of intelligence. Being academically bent or excelling in academics, that's just one form. That's just one form, but that's, that's what we look to. And so the classroom does so much harm to children who have other stronger forms of intelligence and are not allowed to thrive there. And so it can't be summed up in one podcast episode. I invite you to visit my website at generationcedar.com. I have so many articles that will answer these and other questions, so many different routes of exploration that I invite you to come and I would love to talk to you one-on-one -on -one if you have specific questions, but I just encourage you to read and learn and give yourself room to explore this new and very exciting thing called homeschooling. And here's my very best piece of advice to new homeschooling parents and parents thinking about homeschooling. You need to de-school yourself. Okay, and I can help you do that. If you'll come to my website, browse around, I have an e-course now that I tell you exactly how to lose your fear of failing your kids in about an hour. Okay, so come over to the site, grab that. I, I give the free, the first lesson is free. You can check that out. I think it will just give you so much uh, confidence moving forward with your decision. Thanks so much for listening today. Hey, I'd love to hear from you. You can contact me through my blog at generationcedar.com or catch me on Facebook or Instagram. Tell me what has helped you. Tell me what you'd like to hear or just tell me your story. Until next time.